Kalaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where have you seen Joe Biden? Because we sure haven't. This is ballot. That's right. But you're asking the wrong question. The real question is, where's George Clooney? Let's hit this. George Clooney penned an article asking Biden to step aside for 2024. And now, poof, he's vanished faster than my chances of ever dating Amal Clooney. Where in the world is George Clooney? Has he gone into witness protection? Is he on a secret mission to save the world from bad coffee? Was his letter penned by AI posing as George Clooney? Maybe he's just hiding out in one of his 47 villas scattered across the globe. I mean, when you have a house on every continent, it's pretty easy to play the world's most luxurious game of hide and seek. Some say he's been abducted by aliens. But let's be real. If aliens came to Earth, they'd probably take Ryan Gosling instead. Sorry, George. Others think he's gone undercover to investigate the real reason behind Biden's campaign letter. Is he disguised as a White House janitor, snooping around for clues? Is that why the Oval Office suddenly smells like Nespresso? Or maybe, just maybe, he's been trapped in a time loop, constantly reliving the day he wrote that article, unable to move forward. It's like Groundhog Day, but with more political commentary and less Bill Murray. Whatever the reason, one thing's for sure. George Clooney has become the Where's Waldo of Hollywood. But instead of a striped shirt and glasses, we're looking for a silver fox in a perfectly tailored suit. So, if you see a distinguished gentleman with salt and pepper hair, sipping a cocktail and looking suspiciously like he's trying not to be recognized, give us a call. We promise not to tell the Secret Service or Matt Damon. In the meantime, we'll just have to content ourselves with re-watching Ocean's Eleven and pretending it's a documentary about Clooney's current whereabouts. After all, what better way to disappear than with a team of highly skilled thieves? All right, folks, buckle up because we're diving into the latest episode of As the White House Turns. Or should I say, Weekend at Biden's. In a theory crazier than my ex-girlfriend Norma, some people are suggesting that Biden is actually dead. I woke up this morning to images on Twitter. Excuse me, I mean X, because that's not stupid. Thanks, Elon. Pictures of flags around the world supposedly at half-mast, which I guess was better than Norma asking me what we're doing today. I don't know, it's 5.30. Maybe sleeping another 90 minutes. Anyway, President Biden posts a letter resigning from his campaign, and suddenly the internet explodes with theories that he's actually pushing up daisies. I mean, come on, people. If Biden were really dead... Don't you think we'd see a lot more Republican politicians suddenly caring about climate change? But no, apparently some folks think the president has gone to that great ice cream parlor in the sky. Why? Well, for starters, his signature looks a little different. Gasp. It's almost as if signing things while you have COVID might make your hand a bit shaky. Who knew? And then there's the lack of a White House seal on the letter. Because clearly when you're the president of the United States... You always carry around a pocket-sized embosser for all your impromptu resignations. It's right next to the nuclear football, folks. But wait, there's more. Biden called into a campaign event and had a conversation with Kamala Harris. Now I know what you're thinking. That could have been anyone. Maybe it was a Biden impersonator or a very articulate parrot. Well, if it was an impersonator, I've got to say, nailing Biden's tendency to go off on random tangents about corn pop and leg hair is some Daniel Day-Lewis-level method acting. Maybe portions of the Joe Biden show are made with the help of AI. And let's not forget the crown jewel of this conspiracy theory. Charlie Kirk, the man who makes Alex Jones look like Walter Cronkite, shared a story suggesting Biden is dying or possibly already dead. Well, Charlie, I hate to break it to you, but Weekend at Bernie's was a movie, not a blueprint for running the country. So there you have it, folks. The President of the United States is apparently Schrodinger's Biden, simultaneously alive enough to make phone calls, but dead enough to fuel conspiracy theories. Who knew governing could be so exciting? Stay tuned for next week, when we'll probably be discussing how the White House squirrels are actually tiny alien invaders. This is going to be a long election season, isn't it? Well, folks, it looks like we've got a real political gymnast on our hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you J.D. Vance, the man whose opinions on Donald Trump flip faster than a short-order cook at a pancake house. Back in 2016, Vance was all, do you believe Donald Trump who always tells the truth? Just kidding. Ouch. That's some grade-A sarcasm right there. He even tweeted asking what percentage of Americans Trump had sexually assaulted. Talk about a loaded question. 
But fast forward to 2023, and suddenly Vance is singing a different tune. It's like he went from being Trump's harshest critic to his biggest fanboy overnight. Now he's all, I trust my friend. Friend? I guess in politics, friend is code for guy who can make or break my career. This flip-flop is so dramatic, it could win a gold medal in the political Olympics. We've gone from Trump's a serial sexual assaulter to it's just a he said, she said situation. That's not just moving the goalposts, folks. That's picking them up and planting them in a whole different stadium. And let's not forget the cherry on top of this hypocrisy Sunday. Vance now claims the lawsuit against Trump is all about politics, not justice. Because nothing says it's just politics, like a jury finding someone liable for sexual abuse, right? Vance's spokesperson says his old comments don't reflect his views today. Well, I should hope not. If they did, that would make his current stance look pretty. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, opportunistic. I'm sure the Republicans can agree you don't want a really old guy in the Oval Office. Donald Trump, at the ripe young age of 78, is now our oldest presidential nominee. Last time someone that old ran, we wound up with conspiracy theories on a Tuesday morning. It's like Trump saw Biden's age and said, hold my Diet Coke. But unlike Biden, who was practically live streaming his medical checkups, Trump's health info is more closely guarded than the Colonel's secret recipe. Instead of detailed medical reports, we got a letter from his doctor that basically says, Trump's health is huge, the best health. Nobody's ever been this healthy. It's so vague, it could have been written by a magic eight ball. And let's not forget the cognitive test Trump keeps bragging about acing. You know, the one where you have to identify an elephant and remember five words. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure person, woman, man, camera, TV is the bar we should be setting for the leader of the free world. Now, some folks are saying Trump should release more detailed health info. But come on. We all know that if Trump released his full medical records, they'd probably claim he has the body of a 25-year-old Olympic athlete and the brain of Einstein on steroids. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris is sitting pretty at 59, probably thinking, I can't believe I'm the spring chicken in this race. She hasn't released any health info either. But at this point, just being able to run up a flight of stairs without breaking a sweat might be enough to win the presidency. But someone is circulating a picture of her from the 80s, and man, she had it going on. So here we are, folks. The 2024 election, where the candidates' medical records are more closely guarded than Fort Knox, and cognitive ability has become a campaign slogan. Who needs policy debates when we can argue about cholesterol levels and memory tests? Remember when elections were about boring stuff like the economy and foreign policy? Yeah, me neither. Remember when this podcast was about boring stuff like the economy and foreign policy? I sure do. Remember that one guy had a trial and was found guilty 30-something times and could still go to jail? Yeah, that was four major stories ago. We could be looking at President J.D. Vance for all we know. Welcome to the golden age of geriatric politics, where the race for the White House has become a literal race to see who can make it to the finish line without needing a nap. And right now, a nap sounds like a great idea. Portions of today's show were made with the help of AI, just like that mysterious tweet on Sunday.